I just released my Tailwind course over on Build UI, where we build a Discord clone from scratch using Tailwind. And I built the demo last year using the pages directory, so I thought it'd be fun to see what it would look like to convert it over to the app directory in Next 13. So here's the Discord clone. It has a few routes. We can choose a server, we can choose a channel, and we can scroll all of these different panels. And right now, it's basically just the underscore app file and a single dynamic page which uses these segments to build out the rest of the UI. So to start, let's come look at the underscore app file. And I'm just going to grab all of this code right here. This is rendering our server nav over here on the left. So it's perfect for our new root layout in our app directory. So I'm gonna come over here to the default root layout. And I'm just gonna paste in all of this code. And right down here, instead of rendering a page component, we just render children. Now we can see we also need these nav links, so let's come and grab these. I'll just copy these right here. And these use some client-side features. We can see they use the router uh, from the old pages directory. So we're gonna go ahead and make this layout a client layout, just to help us convert these over to the new APIs. Now I can import the Discord icon, and we'll also import the static data that we're using to drive uh, the interface. And before we convert the rest of this, let's actually just get some feedback and make sure we're not doing anything wrong yet. So I'll save this. Let's come back to the home page and refresh. Now we're still seeing the old code and that's because we don't have a page yet. This is just the layout, but because there is a page index.tsx in the pages folder, next is still using our old layout code. So let's go ahead and add page.tsx. We'll export a default function page. That just says, hello. And now we're seeing next pick up the conflicting pages. So I'm just going to rename our pages directory to tilde pages just so it's not recognized. Okay, let's refresh. And here we see we can't export metadata from a component with use client. So for now, since we've made our entire layout a client component, let's just comment this out. And there we go, we're seeing hello, uh, but we're not seeing our server links yet because we've commented them out. So let's go ahead and bring these back. And uh, first, let's go ahead and import image. And here we are using the router to look up our dynamic route parameters. And those are coming from the folders here, SID for server ID, and then CID for the channel ID. But in our new app directory, we don't have any dynamic segments yet. So let's go ahead and recreate the same segments. We have servers slash server ID, and then we have channels slash channel ID. And we'll go ahead and drop a page.tsx file right here. I'll just copy this and say this is the channel page. And now we can update the code for these dynamic segments. So in the app directory, we can use a hook called use params. And this comes from next navigation. And this is going to give us an object with all the dynamic segments uh, off of it. So let's go ahead and log params to the console. And again, we'll just comment these out for now. And if we look in our console, we're gonna see on the home page that params object is empty, but if we were to visit one of the nested URLs, slash servers, slash one, slash channel, slash one, something like this, now we're gonna see those two dynamic segments are right on this params object. So uh, if I go ahead and delete the log, and we uncomment this and this, we can replace router.query.sid with params.sid. And then if we come down to our nav link, we can go ahead and import link. And again, right here, we have another call to use router to get the path. Well, we actually have another new hook called use path name. And this is gonna give us the path name, which we can replace this logic with. And there we go, I just saved it. And it looks like our navigation is starting to work. We can barely see this home page here. It says hello, but uh, the URL does look correct as we navigate around these servers. So let's go ahead and import this missing type. And if we take a look, this is looking pretty good so far. Now it'd be nice if we could use that metadata export to set the page title, but we've made our entire layout a client component. So let's pull out the parts that rely on those client side hooks into a separate client component and turn our root layout back into a server component. 
If we look at our layout, this is all basically a nav. Let's actually just change this tag to be a nav. And we can see this contains all of the nav links right here. So I'm just going to grab this, create a new file called servernav.tsx. And we will export a server nav component that returns our nav. And this is a client component. And let's come steal all these imports right here. And we also want to grab our nav link. So I'll grab this. We'll move this over here. And we can just use params right here in this component so that we can check if it's active like this. Now let's come back and replace this nav with our server nav, which we can import. We don't need this anymore. We can organize our imports to get rid of everything we don't need. And we can turn this back into a server component. And now we should be able to export this metadata and call this discord clone from build UIs tailwind mastery. And there we go. So we can see in our clone that our root layout is pretty minimal, but in a real app, this server component would be a perfect place to actually fetch the list of servers and their icons uh, from a database or from an API directly here in the server component, which you could then use to pass that data into the server nav for this client side interactivity. But this seems to be working great for now. So uh, let's go ahead and replace this index page with the welcome page from our clone. So that's this component right here. I'm gonna to come to the root page and that's just some HTML and Tailwind classes and that looks great. Now let's work on the channel page. So I'm gonna come here to our old pages directory and I'm just gonna copy this whole thing and let's come here to our new nested page and paste this in. And we can also see uh, this page uses some client side features like state and we're gonna to have to get the router as well. So let's make this a client component. Let's go ahead and delete use router. We want to find the SID and CID uh, params. So let's go ahead and use params. And we can replace this and this with params. And the rest looks good. So let's save this. Looks like we're still using router somewhere down here in our channel link. Let's do the same thing. Let params equals use params. And check this out. This is pretty cool. If we take a look at the URL, we can see the channel is on five there. If we go over here, it's on six. If I click back, it all works. I can even toggle these. So uh, all of this transferred over pretty easily and all of our links and navigation are working great. But if you know anything about the app director, you know that it supports nested layouts. And if we look at this clone, this is really a perfect candidate for nested layouts. So uh, unlike in the pages directory version where we had to have all this logic for the sidebar with all the channels as well as the main message panel all in one page, we can actually extract out the portion of this page that is really a layout for the server, right? Once you're on a selected server like Next.js, this is really the layout for the server. And then as we navigate around, we replace the contents of the message panel. So let's pull out this part of the layout from our page and put it into a parent layout. If we come down to our page, I can collapse this div and this div. And this is really the heart of our layout here. These are the two columns that are rendered side by side. And this chunk of our JSX is really the layout and this div, which renders the currently selected channel over here in the rightmost pane, is really the children. That's gonna be the page that slots into our layout. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and create a nested layout. I'm just gonna copy this entire page and I'm gonna come over here and create a servers SID layout.tsx file. And this is gonna be a nested layout that sits right inside of our root layout. So let's paste in the entire page from before, but I'm gonna call this server layout. And I'm gonna come down here to our two divs. And instead of rendering all of the content in the main pane, we're gonna replace this with children, which we get from our layouts props. And this is exactly what layouts are for. They are for taking in children and slotting them in to our layout, just like that. So let's go ahead and type children, react node. And now if we look, uh, we shouldn't be using a 
whole bunch of this stuff. This one is gone. This one is gone. We can organize our imports here to get rid of some of the unused imports. And uh, nice, we see our new layout being rendered above our page, but the page still has a layout code as well. So let's come here and find the beginning of our return statement right here. And we don't need any of this. We don't need this. We don't need this. Pretty cool. Let's get rid of some of this unused stuff right here. This is in the parent, so we don't need this state anymore. We don't need these channel links because they are in uh, the layout as well. Let's go ahead and organize our imports and just click around to make sure we did that right. So this is pretty cool. Our categories still work, our channels still work. But now if we kind of shrink this down and just take a look at the code, we're gonna see our root layout renders our server nav right here. We have a nested layout under servers SID. So once we've selected a server like Tailwind or Next, then we get this whole UI right here. We also get all the behavior uh, with the collapse and categories. And then we have a slot for children uh, to render the page into this main message area. And in fact, if we look at this page, we can see we're still using client right here because of use params. But if I were to get rid of use client and we comment this out, let's just return null for now. We're actually gonna see that pages get a params argument. And if we log this, this is pretty cool. Uh, we refresh this. We're actually not gonna see our console log over in the client because it is now a server component. So we can get the SID and the CID uh, dynamic route segments directly from the props of our page. And this is really a channel page. And again, this would be a perfect place in a real app to use these params and fetch data from your backend all in your server component. But in our case, we are just gonna use them to kind of fetch our dummy data from our JSON file. We can go ahead and add a quick type here. SID is a string and CID is a string. And now if we come over and refresh, we don't need this hook anymore and everything seems to be working great. So uh, this is pretty cool. Our page is a server component and it's not even hydrating or using any React features on the client, but our nested server layout here does have some React features. Uh, we're using state to make these toggleable right here, just like in Discord, and um, decorating the links that are active. So that's pretty cool. Makes it really easy to work, move between server and client components. And uh, again, we've made the whole layout a client component in a real app. If you wanted to do some server-side features, we could extract out the channel navigation just like we did in the root layout and make that component a client layout. But for this demo, this works just fine. So I think that about does it. Let's go ahead and get rid of our old pages directory. I'll close all of these groups and let's just take one more look. Go ahead and close the dev tools here. And uh, yeah, this is looking pretty nice. We've got our homepage here, which is just an app slash page.tsx. This is getting slotted in to our root layout right here. So the root layout kind of this persistent layout always renders these servers and then slots in whichever page is active into this slot right here. And on the home page, we kind of have this welcome screen. And then once we navigate to these dynamic URLs, we start filling it in with first a layout that is under the selected server. This layout uses some React state to make some toggleable categories. And it also has this channel link, which it can use uh, the use params client side hook uh, to give it kind of an active treatment here. And then finally, it also has this little slot where it renders children, which is where it slots in the actual page for the given channel ID in our URL. And this channel page is just a server component. It finds some data, it renders some markup, but everything works pretty great. And uh, that was pretty easy. I mean, there was just a few concepts of mapping things like the router APIs from the pages directory to hooks like use params or use path name uh, to the app directory. Otherwise, um, I love how portable this code is. And this app is a really great candidate for Next13's nested router because it lets us keep all of the code kind of for the separate pieces of the layout 
in their own files. And again, this would really shine if this were a dynamic app and each one of those layouts and pages were async server components that were using the dynamic data from the URL to fetch their respective data. It kind of is that ideal developer experience of getting to co-locate our data fetching code based on the dynamic data in the URL, right with the JSX that we want to kind of transform and return from our component, all without having to use separate functions or separate exports, just a good old React component to do all that heavy lifting. So that about wraps up our little migration here. Like I said, I just finished this course over on Build UI. It's called Tailwind Mastery and you learn Tailwind from scratch we go through and build exactly the clone you just saw. You learn all sorts of cool things, how to make nested layouts with Flexbox that have independently scrollable panels, how to apply cool hover treatments with the group utility, how to customize Tailwind's typography and colors so we can get a pixel perfect match with Discord, and even some thoughts on how best to use Tailwind with component-based frameworks like React and Vue. So if you're interested in that or you ever want to support the channel, check out the link to buy that over on Build UI. You can buy the course for 99 bucks or at the time of this video, you can still get a lifetime membership for our early bird price of $149. That gets you all of our courses, which include Tailwind, Remix, Framer Motion, and an ongoing server components course, as well as anything else we publish in the future. And that price will be going up towards the end of the summer. Otherwise, let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.